Hi, my name is Saxon Murray. I'm a member of Veterans for Freedom, and I'm here to discuss Marcus Ray a little bit as I have received a few messages and seen some comments and things like that. And I'm hoping to kind of paint a better picture for you so you have a little bit of understanding about why there is some concern around this individual and his associates. So first thing off the bat is uh, the idea of the situation that we have going on right now in Canada. If you can uh, think about everything that's been going on, gas shortages, um, increase in interest rates, housing bubbles that are being made, um, food shortages, and all kinds of things that make life harder for you and make you feel more pressed and hopeless. Uh, that's all going on, but we need to take that and place it onto a chessboard because we're all in a big game of chess right now. If you haven't been paying attention, now you know. Big game of chess. And uh, in this big game of chess, we have an opponent. And the opponents are the government and the media and other smaller groups that are usually linked into the media, like fact checkers, social media, things like that. So that's our opponent in this big game of chess. Now in chess, as you are likely aware, because most of you have existed on this planet long enough to uh, understand the rules of chess, but the objective of chess is to checkmate your opponent and or put them in check. So when you're doing that, the objectives are, especially when you're trying to put someone in check, is to get them to have to get rid of their plans completely and focus on just getting away from you and moving their piece reactively to your presence and to the situation you've put their king in. Now, if you're uh, somebody who's good at chess, then you take this situation when you put somebody in check and you've already calculated their limited movements that they have and have decided ways to capitalize on that. So you have to remember, when you're putting somebody in check, you're putting them to a situation where they have limited movement and a situation where you can calculate their movement in response and plan to react to their response so you can put them in checkmate. And then boom, game over, you win. So this is also commonly called fifth generation warfare in many ways. And or in this case, we also have a misinformation war as well. So with that in your minds, I want to now talk about a little bit about the government's strategy or the opponent's strategy right now in this game of chess that we're in. And where are we positioned exactly? I'll say that I'm not 100% certain that we're in check yet, but we're getting pretty close to being in check if we aren't already in check now. So as I earlier mentioned, um, we currently have lots of price increases, gas is going up, inflation, uh, we have still the effects of the mandates on many, many, many Canadians. And uh, things are seeming more hopeless than they have ever seen before. And we also have a lot of division along political lines, ideological beliefs, and uh, all of those things. And these are the things that are putting us into check or a reactive state where our movements are limited and a, and a response to our movements can be calculated and planned for. Okay, so because of all of these things going on in this country and worldwide, actually, and specifically in the Western world, uh, because there's something going on, guys, if you haven't been paying attention. Um, because of all of this, we are now in a state of distrust, of our neighbor, of our government, of the media. We are in a more of a state of division from our neighbors, from our friends, from our family. And we are feeling much more hopeless and worried about our futures. And, and, and probably, as far as I can tell, Canadian history. This is the first time in a very, very, very long time, if ever, that 
a large, large group of Canadians are starting to feel like things are getting very bad and that their lives are going to be greatly affected by it. And this is on purpose. Not only is this true, because that is happening and your lives are going to be very greatly affected by what's going on. This is on purpose. One, it's a purpose for control. But the second is, is to get people to, who aren't going to just comply and get along with uh, whatever fix the government comes in with to fix these problems or control the situation, uh, people are going to start reacting. And they only have limited ways to react. So remember, if you're being put in check and you're the king, you can only move one space at a time. And your opponent knows that. They can use multiple different pieces to corner you off. Let's say they have a rook way down the board and that just does a big straight line. Well, if your king can't move over here because of that rook, then you can't move there, can you? And if the queen's right here, well, then you can't move anywhere but away diagonally and you only got that one space to go. So they limit your movement and they plan for your reaction. So currently... That is the state of the chessboard that we're in right now. We are about to be put in check or we are in check. And we're going to be put into the reaction phase of the opponent's game plan. Now, one of the reactions that we could have could be, instead of continuing forward with what we did with the, the convoy uh, in Ottawa, would be, to become violent instead of peaceful, to do the th things that the government tried to label us with doing previously. And this is where Marcus Ray comes in. So not only has Marcus Ray tried to drop, name drop association with veterans groups and ex-police groups, uh, as well as Danny Bulford and other people, part of the movement, who have never associated with him at all. Um, he is doing so to make sure that these groups are tied to or tagged up with him. Okay, His plan, one of his plans, as vague as it is, um, is to get a critical mass of Canadians together along with a force of people he says veterans and ex-police, which are not veterans for freedom or police on guard. I can tell you that right now. Um, and have them occupy a courthouse and hold court. Uh, and he does this on the basis of a constitutional sheriff's movement or idea of a constitutional sheriff, which doesn't exist in Canada. And it can't be done in Canada. It's not legitimate in any form. And that wouldn't matter anyways, because going into a provincial or federal courthouse and occupying it is illegal. So he's, he wants to do something like that. He also wants to make sure that he ties in as many different groups as he can. Himself and many of his associates who are traveling around Canada between the Maritimes and BC right now, uh, they make sure that all of their vehicles are adorned with every sticker and flag and banner that is associated with the convoy and different peaceful freedom groups. There's a point to that that I might talk about in a second. He wants to give the dirt and the shovel to the government so they can bury the movement. Okay, now here's some of the dirt that he's giving them right now. During the convoy, the government and the media labeled the convoy as a illegal occupation. What did I just say that going into a provincial or federal courthouse would be? It would be an illegal occupation. Now, he's insinuated violence on multiple videos, but he's also directly talked about a violent act in a video that you can find on my Facebook wall, uh, where he talks about... Uh, he's asked the question, well, what will you do with the people you hold to court uh, and you find them guilty? He basically says he's going to execute them. So he's already said that in advance. So th that's all the government needs to refer to to say, okay, well, now that he has his courthouse, he's already said that he wants to execute people. 
So there's the incitement of violence. That's exactly what the government needs to limit your movement and for them to bring the hammer down on you as they put all those nails in the coffin and start using that shovel and that dirt that Marcus has given them to bury the movement. Uh, the dirt is exactly what the dirt was when they were trying to bury the movement with their lies during the convoy. And this is why you need to be concerned about people with Marcus Ray, because they're taking advantage or working in step with, and that's what I think, working in step with our opponents to help them put us in check and then checkmate. So some of the things that I get concerned about when I watch his videos, and I've watched almost every single one I can find, and there's quite a few of them, and uh, I've talked to some of his associates per personally on the phone, um, is that he is very interested in causing lots of problems. He's very interested in making sure that he seems like he's got the plan. He said in other videos, the time for protest is over, it didn't work. Peaceful protests didn't work. Well, what's that insinuate, guys? What does that make you think? He uses a lot of terms and phrases that are easy to manipulate and easier still to apply your own context to. So in one of his videos that you can find right on his website, he talks about uh, how we're being pushed very hard and we need to push back harder than we're being pushed. Well, what does that mean? That's left up for you to think about. But then he also says things in the very same video where he talks about we need to get this done now and we need to do it now. We know what we need to do, which again, he doesn't actually explain what we need to do, but he lets you insinuate what it is we need to do. And then right after, he says to my American brothers in the South, you know what you need to do. And then he gives a nice little pause. And we know that the Americans had a revolutionary war over taxes and that the Americans take their rights much more seriously than apparently Canadians do, and that they also have much more firearms than we do, and more rights to firearms than we do. So I wonder what he's insinuating there, or letting you think he's talking about when he mentions things like pushback. So that's some more concerning things. So he uses your hopelessness, your worry and your fears just like the government does, just like the media does, to manipulate you into a reaction or into a plane of thought that can be used to manipulate you further into doing things that you might not normally do. So, you need to think about that and really consider why would he want to give Justin Trudeau all of those things Justin Trudeau claimed about the convoy in the first place. Why would he want to do that? The other thing you need to think about is the tactics that are used by our opponents. A lot of the time, if you read a CBC or CTV or National Post article, they leave a lot up to you to put context to. They don't paint the picture directly. They give you the colors and they tell you to paint it. Uh, they often lead with emotional uh, phrases and word usage and uh, topics. They like to use things to draw on your emotions, to get you to feel like you need to agree with them because your emotions are in line with what they are talking about. That's all trickery. And uh, I like to use the word witchcraft, and that's what it is. Uh, there he's doing the exact same thing that the media does to manipulate people, but he's trying to do it on our side. Why would he be doing that? Why would he be using the same tactics that the government funded media uses? I don't know. You got to think about that a little bit, don't you? So all these points that I'm just kind of quickly going over here, I hope, hopefully you can think about this a little bit more is that why would somebody be doing something like this when we saw during the convoy, what being peaceful neighborly Canadians looks like and how effective that was. Yes, sure, at the end, 
a bunch of us, not me personally, but a bunch of protesters got beaten up, dragged out of there, fake arrests, fake fines, all this stuff that doesn't stand up in court. All this stuff happened. Uh, they used the elite. They used the Emergency Measure Measures Act illegally, uh, based off of the perception they were able to push out on the media and through government. Okay, the only reason that they were able to get away with that is because they did stoke some type of fear amongst some people that this convoy was up to no good and this convoy was full of racists. So it was less questionable when they illegally used the Emergency Measures Act, and that some people might even support it, which they did. And that was all done through perception. Perception is key. Perception is everything in a game of chess or in warfare. Because if you can get someone to perceive something a certain way, then you can manipulate them to get them to move in a way that you want them to or to be completely useless to your advances. So you have to keep this in mind. This is a chess game. We are at war. It's a information war. And... Uh, we can't be suckered in. Uh, the idea here is that my belief is that Marcus Ray is a Fed. Why do I think that? Well, I'll tell you right now. He's been to court multiple, multiple times. He owes a ton of money to his targets and victims uh, that he's never paid. And uh, if you've watched our other V4F movie they, or video, they put out, uh, Tom Quiggan made a very key point that needs to be remembered. In the military, um, and we can even see this with the, D the Delisle character that was arrested in Halifax for supporting the Russians at the Trident building. Um, he had financial problems and other issues, and uh, some Russian agent came and said, hey, we'll give you some money to help take care of your issues, because obviously you need help right now if you give us information on NATO movements at sea. And he did. Very similar situation to multiple informants and bad actors across Canada and the United States. They rope you in that way. When you're in the military uh, and you get security clearance, as Tom Quiggan pointed out, uh, they want to make sure when they look through your files that you're not in massive debt, that you don't have any uh, other things that are putting pressures on you financially and relationship-wise and things like that, that can be taken advantage of by foreign agents. So when we go and we see how much money Marcus owes and that he already has a history of being a scam artist, he literally stole $250,000 from a, a, a dying lady and he still hasn't paid back his fines on that either. So he owes a lot of money. So that would make him very easy to convince to start doing what he's doing. On top of that, he's already made some other false claims that I myself can say for certain, I believe to be completely false. I was very involved in the convoy. Uh, Marcus Ray likes to say I was the first, he, that he was the first one there and one of the last ones to leave. I can tell you for a fact, I didn't see him at all. And I was actually one of the first people there and one of the last people to leave. I got to meet all kinds of people working in the HQ buildings that we had established in Ottawa. And I did personal security for many of the speakers there. And I find it interesting that Marcus Ray doesn't have a single picture of him at the convoy. And if anybody does, please send it my way. I'd love to see it. Uh, no videos of him speaking at the convoy, but yet he has videos that he's, he's just going balls to the wall, getting interviews and videos now, talking about his big plans. But he wasn't doing that during the convoy. And he also wasn't at the convoy, but he claims he was, and he doesn't show any proof that he was. If you have proof that he was, I'd love to see it. I've talked to multiple people, uh, Invest for Freedom, other people that I've made connections with through the convoy movement. No one's seen him. No one can recall seeing Marcus Ray, talking to Marcus Ray, anything like that. So I'll tell you right now, that's a really big lie. And unless there's, he comes out with some proof immediately, then you need to start really considering who you're following scam artist and somebody who's already lying about his connections to vets and police, uh, particular figureheads in the movement, and has a history of scamming old ladies for $250,000 and not even repaying uh, his fines and fees after the court hammered him down for it. All right. 
So that's basically where I'm going to end it is things for you to consider. And then I'm going to tell you because I've got a couple messages about why what Veterans for Freedom, Police on Guard and other groups who want to remain peaceful are doing things right. So we talked about the chess board game. The idea is to not play chess. Okay. The opponent wants you to play chess. We're not going to do that. We're not playing chess. Okay. We are not playing chess. Things are happening and they're going to happen. Things are going to get worse. And there's not very much we can do about it to stop it from getting worse. Okay. And people who think that you can go and stop this, yeah, there's a chance maybe we could find a way to be to get the police to be responsible, to get the government to start to act on uh, actual laws, but we know that that's not the case. And uh, the idea of doing anything uh, nowadays doesn't matter if you consider it legal or not, they're going to find a way to uh, skirt around that and oppress you anyways. So what do we do? Well, we don't play chess. We remain peaceful. We remain non-compliant. That is the only way. Why do I know that it's the only way? Well, because before all this convoy stuff started, I felt very alone and I felt like, well, maybe violence is the, uh, maybe violence is the answer. Maybe people need to get angry because nothing's happening. But it's not. The convoy showed me specifically that peaceful non-compliance and being peaceful and neighborly only shines a light on the evil in this country and the corruption in this country. What did we see happen? We saw the government go out and lie. We saw the media go out and lie. We saw the government make illegal moves on the convoy. We saw them be tyrannical. We saw them oppress and beat protesters and veterans that were there supporting a totally legal, peaceful, charter-approved protest. So our peacefulness made them react. It made them be like, why aren't these guys playing chess? And go over the top and lose their marbles and shine a light to all the other Canadians who were paying attention but weren't sure about the corruption. Seem a little bit more sure about the corruption, right? And then we've drawn more people over to our side through that because we're shining the light on what we've been saying is going on. We're letting it come and rear its ugly head. Now that's not fun. Nobody wants to get butt struck by the cops or beat or arrested. But unfortunately, we have to take the hard road and not the easy road. Nothing worthwhile comes easily. And this movement is going to take a long time to get where we need to be. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen with some court occupation and going around and arresting, arresting and executing people. We still have to get the country back together. All of the people who are like this need to come back like this, okay? That is the goal. Their weapon has been division. They're trying to put us in a game of chess where we react to their, their movements, where they can cal calculate a response to further control us. And even those movements are under their control. We think we're doing things, but they put us in a position where we have to do those things. That's why we're not playing chess. We don't play chess, okay? Get that in your head. We're not playing chess. We're playing our own game. And it's called peaceful non-compliance. Do you think that Jesus Christ thought like, oh, well, I can't wait for this thing I know is going to happen to me to happen? No. He was probably not very excited that the Father was like, oh, well, you're a sacrifice for the sins of humanity. You get to go be whipped, beaten, have your flesh torn off, carry this big friggin' cross up a hill and be hung to it, stabbed with a spear and die. Okay? He knew the outcome of what was happening. We know the outcome too, okay? And we need to accept the fact that things are getting bad. The only way forward is if we can become together again build communities and support for each other. Trust and work together. Protesting is just one part of the big picture here. I don't think that protests are going to be what wins this for us. It's going to be the result of things like bringing people together, getting everybody under the big umbrella of peace and freedom, and having the government further shine a light on us until, or 
having us further shine a light on the government and their corruption that's going to bring more people out. Because the other side of the pressures is everybody is under this pressure. And if we can continue to shine that light and they're looking for hope, then they're going to see what we're doing is the right thing. Nobody in Canada wants to get behind a violent uprising. Nobody's going to be getting involved in that. If we can be peaceful and everybody else who starts to come under the pressure can see what we're talking about and doing, and then we're able to expose the government lies and corruption through them playing outside of their game that they're not prepared for, that's how we win. But it's going to take a long time. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable. Okay? I talked to somebody earlier today uh, where I mentioned that there's two sides of the spectrum here uh, of wanting to go back to normal and have your life back. One side is that just get jabbed and comply. The other side is I'll show you who's boss. Both of these sides are not the right side, okay? I'll show you who, bo who whose boss is going to bring more pain down on us and jabs and I'll comply is just going to allow the government to increase their power the way that they want to. Okay, so we're not going to do any of that. We're going to come together and be peaceful because this is the only way forward. It's slow, it's hard, it's treacherous. Some of us may get arrested. Some of us may get put into a lot of bad positions, but it's that sacrifice that is going to bring us forward in the end. As a Canadian veteran and somebody who was a soldier in the army for 12 years, I know that the way to achieve your goal is through understanding that you may have to sacrifice everything to achieve that goal. You have an objective that you want to get to. The last thing you think about is, how do I do this in the quickest, easiest way? No, you do it in the way that's safest for you that makes the most sense, that does involve sacrifice. Sacrificing the easy way, sacrificing getting home early, sacrifice maybe not getting wounded. Sometimes the hard way is the only way forward. And we need to accept that things are changing, things are gonna get worse. And playing their game and reacting is not and reacting towards them is not what to do, is not what we need to do. We need to come together. We need to have more open lines of communications between all of these groups and begin to support each other, whether it be through farming initiatives, through community planning, through running our own systems, much like we have currently, to support us. Because they want to make it feel like all of our support is gone. They want to take away all of those conveniences. So again, the I'll show you and I'll get jabbed. They both want the same thing. They both want to go back to normal, to be allowed to go back into their convenient lives, which are just an illusion in the first place, okay? So the big problem is, is that both of these sides don't see what the big problem is. And the big problem is up here. It's the government institutions and the media that are working very hard to take away your voice and control you. They want you to think that you, you should just go back to paying your bills, being able to fly everywhere and stuff like that. They don't want you to understand that they're the actual problem. So the goal here is if you actually want to win and solve the problems in Canada, we need to expose the government. We need to bring more light to the situation so people can see what's actually going on and then we can bring change about slowly that way. It's not going to happen overnight. I already told you, it's not going to. Don't be a summer soldier is, is a term that we like to use in the military. We have to be winter soldiers. When things get cold, things get hard, things get scarce, you have to continue to soldier on and keep your eye on the goal. The goal isn't to get arrested. The goal isn't to do these things. If that happens, that happens. But it better be because you were being peaceful and non-compliant, not because you were being violent, not because you were illegally doing anything. We don't want to give them the dirt and we don't want to give them the shovel. Hopefully this made sense to a lot of you guys watching this. If you have any questions, please PM me. Do not start flooding my comic 
box with a bunch of stuff I have to respond to. So it has like 7 billion comments on there. And it's just me being like, no, 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 you just don't get it kind of thing. I'd like to talk to you personally. And uh, if you have any concerns, any information that you want to give me about Marcus Ray or anybody like that, please let me know. Uh, I also sound the alarm on two individuals that have been meeting around Canada that I find to be very suspicious that are linked with Marcus Ray uh, would be Jeremy Spinney and Dominic Sinelli. Uh, if you are in contact with them, uh, they're playing a really good game and making it seem like they're legit. But I'll tell you right now, some of the spiritual stuff they're pushing right now, they're just pushing it because they know that a lot of people in Ottawa, they felt a spiritual connection. A lot of us are Christians. A lot of people are spiritual. A lot of people are Nordic uh, that were showing up there. A lot of people in the spiritual world and the religious world were showing up there and now they're trying to play on that because veterans for freedom has been out there crashing their narrative thank you for listening god bless you